Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back to another exciting episode of Celebrating Act 2 with Manny Pacheco, our special guest, uh, a Hollywood historian uh, par excellence, and my partner, John Coleman. How are you doing, guys? Pacheco. I'm excited. <laughs> you said it's exciting. I'm excited. Pacheco. Manny Pacheco. Chicken well, that, stirred. that was a clever lead-in. What should we talk about today? Okay. Have, I don't know if you guys have seen um, Daniel nope. Craig's interviews yeah. Yeah. about the new James Bond movie because it's going to be, he's made it absolutely clear he's not going to do another one. Right. You mean, I think you he, mean he, after he absolutely made it clear the last time that he was never going to do this one? Yeah. Well, I, well, he's quoted now as saying, when this next, when the next James Bond actor comes out with the next James Bond, I'm probably going to kill myself <laughs> <laughs> for having. Well, let me just offer a, a, something to to, to to Daniel Craig. There's no time to die, really. There is no time at all. <laughs> you know, this movie has done very well. They waited and waited and waited. Yes. And waited and to uh, to release this movie on the big screen as opposed to streaming. And you know, with the Bond. Uh, series of films that was probably that's the one time I would say that's a very good move you, you don't want to yeah yeah you don't want to uh, do that you, you definitely want to put this out you know big 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 films you know the, the, the perfect popcorn movie uh, but there's a there's a whole historical reference around James Bond and that's what I'm here for obviously uh, I'm not here to uh, you know uh, offer the 2021 version of the Daniel Craig thing. I'm here to really offer the histor the history behind James Bond, a fictional character that was uh, created by the British journalist Ian Fleming in 1952. I thought it would be an earlier uh, writing, but actually it was a 1950s character right in the heart of the Cold War. So it makes sense. Who do you think the first Bond was in history? Ian Fleming. No, well, that, you know, that is a smart guess. Very savvy guess. It's wrong, but it's a huh. very savvy choice. I would, that, that's clever, uh, Art. The uh, first Bond was uh, actor Barry Nelson in a TV version of Casino Royale. No kidding. I mean, Barry Nelson yeah. was this character actor that you see in a, you know, sure. you know very likable guy. I just never sure. saw him as a as I'm Bond. not British. No, he's not British. He's American. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, yeah, but uh, he was a versatile actor, and he yeah. he did comedies. And he did um, that's a surprising choice, though. That's right. Who do you think were the uh, the first choices to be Bond on film when it finally came to be, 1962? Who do you think they were thinking about? Who were some of the names you think? Uh, I don't know. I'm because I'm stuck with the people who actually played Bond. What have I told you that the first choices to play Bond were Cary Grant, and David Niven? David Niven, I can see. Yeah, Cary yeah. Grant. Well, you know what? Cary Grant did yeah. no notorious. I mean, he could have pulled yeah. it off. He was old at I, the time. I could see Cary Grant. But I then they see. then they turned their attention onto Roger Moore. Mm -hmm. Roger Moore was the go-to guy. The problem is because of all this talk about, you know, the Cold War and spies and films about spies. He was already in production with a television version of a spy caper based sure. on a, an earlier film series, The Saint, yeah. played by George Saunders. Uh, that and was a very successful TV series. That was a great show. I, I yes, enjoyed it a lot. But the more successful that it was, the less of a chance that Roger Moore was going to play Bond. But then didn't we get lucky? We got lucky because he wasn't available. Because, in my opinion, the best of all is... The guy who just started it off was Sean Connery, right? Yes, and you're right. I, I agree. We got lucky. I mean, yeah. Sean Connery at the time was known as just a light comedy bit player. He had just appeared in The Longest Day uh, as a Scottish uh, soldier who does all the comedic parts in the, in the film. I mean, he wasn't taken very seriously, but boy, what a stroke of luck for Sean Connery and what a stroke of luck for Cubby Broccoli, the producer, yeah. great Cubby Broccoli, I love that name, 
Anyway, uh, and for Eon Productions, I mean, they ended up making 25 films with various Bonds. Uh, it's the sixth most successful film series in history. In the Only history sixth? Film. I'm surprised it's not the number one. Well, you've got others. You have the Thin Man series, and you had Tarzan, which lasted forever. Mm -hmm. Yep. I mean, there are others. I mean, but but Bond is the sixth at this point. I don't think we're very far from it jumping all the way to number one at one point. Yeah. So who did, you know who followed uh, uh, Sean Connery? I mean, he did, and you know what? For his part, he's pull, he's the one that started this whole notion that well, I don't want to play it for the rest of my career. Sounds familiar with Daniel Craig? I don't <laughs> know. I don't think I want to keep playing him. I mean, and so he actually pulled away from it for a, for a time. So you know who he was followed by, don't you? Roger Moore. No, not not, not even the not even the next two were Roger Moore. The really? next one, the next one was David Niven in the parody of the James Bond films, Casino Royale, where David Niven plays Bond and he has his nephew Jimmy Bond played by Woody Allen. <laughs> That's you know I don't remember that one. Well, oh, wow. I don't remember that. It's a silly film, but what it's known for is the great Hal David and Burt Bacharach score. The Look of Love was a big hit from there. And, oh, uh, okay. Yeah, it yeah. It was sort of like the Ocean's Eleven version of James Bond. Yeah, you're yeah. right. But I, think it's, I think it's the What's Up, What's New Pussycat version of James yeah. Bond. Yeah. <laughs> and then that was followed by George Lazenby. I, I, I don't know if you Eminently guys... Eminently forgettable. Right. Yeah, but there is something important about that one film he did, His, Majesty, His Majesty's Secret, Secret Service, Service. As it's called. Yeah. It's a famous movie because on Her Majesty's Secret Service, George Lazenby plays the Bond that gets married. He actually marries. Ah. So, so his wife, by the time the film's over, dies. So he of becomes course. a widower. But the person who played his wife is the beautiful Diana Rigg. Oh. So Diana Rigg was actually the bride of... Oh, uh, now is, is Diana Rigg playing... Mrs. Bond before or after uh, the Avengers? After. After the Avengers. After wow. the Avengers, yes. They used her star power from the Avengers, another Bond spinoff, hmm. if you think yes. about it. Yes, yeah. Uh, and, and Diana Rigg, of course, was this really uh, lovely person. I mean, just fun to watch. She was playful. She was tough. Yeah. She was smart, really yeah. smart. And uh, and she she was the perfect perfect person to be wed to um, the Bond, uh, albeit George Lazenby's Bond. And you know, as a kid, I was really thrilled when Roger Moore became James Bond. I loved the Roger Moore's Bonds as a kid, but as an adult, I like him a lot less. There's too much of a wink and a nod in those Bonds that weren't gritty and edgy as Sean Connery. I think the Sean Connery. Uh, films hold up way better. I, I just do, and I think art art is. You're in agreement with me, aren't you? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, he set the he set the, the the gold standard, and everybody else. Look, uh, there was also um, uh, Matt Damon was in a whole series of uh, the Bourne uh, yes, identity and this and that, and he did like three or four of them, and then they brought in somebody else, and it flopped, and then they brought him back, and. He made an absolutely terrific film. So, you know, sometimes what happens is they set the standard. It's like having somebody play, uh, 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 who's the guy who played Raiders of the Lost Ark? To have somebody else take uh, his place would be, it just wouldn't work. You know, That's, two things. Two things. One, by the time Roger Moore took over, he was simply just too old. He was already older than Sean Connery to begin with. And so the idea of him playing him, you know, 10 or 12 or 15 years later, that just wasn't going to work. And that's a shame. Roger Moore was the one person that wanted to be Bond in the worst way. I mean, he lived for the idea of playing James Bond. And secondly, if I had a nickel for every time Art Kirsch mentions the Bourne series or Roger Corman, <laughs> I would, I would have these, these interviews because I'd be a very rich man. Well, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for Matt Damon to do something for Roger Corman, and then yeah. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna have you all over. But so let me ask you a question, Matty. 
Okay, uh, if you have some other really interesting Bond things, I'm, I'm open to hearing that. But my real question is, are we ready for the next film to be Bond, Jane Bond? Well, I don't know that that's going to happen, but that's a really intriguing question. They're talking very seriously that Idris Elba is going to be the next James Bond. They figured that if Will Smith could do the Wild Wild West, why not Idris Elba as Bond, James yeah. Bond? And I, I, I'm, I'm for it. I mean, you know, I mean, they, they did, they did create a the the leader M. You know, Judy Dench was M, and you know, in inspect, you know, Inspector and 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 uh, 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 Skyfall. I mean, in Skyfall. Yeah. Yeah. So i um, and and by the way, Skyfall, my my favorite, most recent Bond uh, entry. I loved Skyfall. I love the music. I loved. Uh, to me, Skyfall is the modern day Goldfinger or or Thunderball, as far as the, I think it's the best of the bunch. It was. Uh, good. Yeah, I think Timothy Dalton took himself a little too seriously when he played Bond. I've, I've never been a big Timothy Dalton fan at all. Uh, you know, maybe it maybe it needed a touch of seriousness after Roger Moore. So I guess that's okay. We give him a pass for that. Pierce Brosnan was kind of the Roger Moore follow up to Sean Connery because you know Pierce is kind of another one of those wink and nodders, but Daniel Craig comes closest to the whole Sean Connery, a little bit of humor. And a lot of bravado. I mean, Daniel Craig was a real find. He, he to me, is the second best Bond, without a doubt, behind Sean Connery. Yeah, I probably... Well, I want, to take, I want to take exception, because I think each of them brought something to the table. They, mm -hmm. they, each of them showed another side of Bond. Mm -hmm. and they, they couldn't all be the same anyway, because right. they're all different people. But I think each actor wants to be different. Mm -hmm. You know, they want to to make that character theirs, um, as opposed to playing it exactly the way Sean Connery did. Yeah, and let me let me offer some context of of the importance of the introduction of the Bond films in 1964. The Brit the British got it right away. They knew it was going to be big, so they went into production with the Saint and the Avengers. Ah. I, I, you know, the Americans were just getting over a terrible tragedy with the assassination of Kennedy. We were absolutely in a funk. Yeah. And it was going to take two things in early 1964 that was going to change all of that. While the Brits were celebrating the Beatles and James yeah. Bond, when they finally arrived here in the United States, it became a real to-do. And so it was James Bond that became the game changer. And so we were a little late at the table when television decided to jump on that whole James Bond bandwagon. We already had the Avengers, a BBC production, or at least a British production, yeah. and, and The Saint. But we came, came along with The Man from UNCLE. That became our version of Bond on television. Interesting. With Great. I mean, we had the British actor, of course, David McKellum, but, you know, you had yeah. Leo G. Carroll. And basically, The Man from UNCLE was originally, before Bond came along, it was going to be basically the, the villainous types were going to be based on the Sir Arthur Conan Doyle uh, uh, villains that were featured in, um, in the Sherlock Holmes series. But once Bond became popular, Ian Fleming, right before he died, was called on to write some scripts and, and develop the villains and the modern gadgetry that was going to be associated with Bond. Okay. And it was the man from UNCLE who then uh, was the father of great shows like Mission Impossible yes. and the wonderful Get Smart. Yeah. So, I mean, Bond has a real legacy, not only in film, but on television as well. And yeah. so uh, I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that at least. Well, you, Manny, you are never remiss. <laughs> <laughs> just, okay, okay, I'm never remiss. <laughs> just like Art, Art keeps mentioning. <laughs> Roger, okay, Roger. John. Okay, John. Let me go back You're to. Never remiss. Let me let me go back to the time when you appeared on television on a kinescope. No. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, and this is th a great uh, a great perspective on Bond, James Bond. Thank you, Pacheco, Manny Pacheco. You're welcome, Coleman. Mark, John. Uh, I would like my drinks shaken, not stirred. <laughs> okay. Okay. Take care, guys. See ya.
For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.